like you away from the others. Mm. Howard, I hesitate to bring this up, but I must. Howard, I hesitate to bring this up, but I must. I hesitate to bring this up. Is this by any chance similar to the experience you had? Glance back to make sure they're out of your ear hot. They're out of earshot. Somewhat. A uh, bit more malevolent, uh, if I were to classify it. Uh, it seems to be some sort of freewheeling spirit, less mm. interested in torment and more interested in murder. Uh, I feel like that's fairly obvious. I just don't want to frighten the children. Yes, no, of course. The reason I'm asking is, um, was there anything in particular that you were able to do to stop that from happening? Or Certainly, uh, appeal to the being's logic, uh, quell its emotions. Though if I'm being quite honest, this feels somewhat different. Yes, I doubt that this creature is particularly persuaded particularly easily persuaded and I'm not particularly easily frightened but the one thing that does make me uncomfortable is not knowing and I have very little knowledge about what's happening this evening but uh, it seems now we have a time issue yes on we go on we go is it possible to use one of our our gear we can use it multiple times as long as it's on us right yeah as we get closer to the body and, and pass by it, mm -hmm. can I look at my detector and see if there was like a trail from the other bodies to this one? Sure. And beyond? Go ahead and turn on your the detector. As you kind of cruise by, the energy crackles a bit, and you can see across the frozen corpse and in the space around it, kind of a smattering of bleed residue. And you can see as one of the officers comes forward and kind of like makes them inspect the body, they go ahead and touch one of those areas of bleed and watch as they kind of like <gasps> begin to like have a momentary emotional freak of one of those soldiers or one of their uh, officers begins to try and console them and they are kind of looking a bit spooked. And the other officer kind of takes them and sets them down, not fully understanding the scope of what's happening as you kind of remove your detector and see that there is indeed a continuous thread of corruption, of bleed corruption being left in the wake of whatever this is. Does it go beyond the body of this woman? Uh, best you can tell, as it strikes past the body, it seems to dissipate. Okay. If you'd like to try and make a sense test to see if you could gather where that residual bleed energy might be leading you. I'm time. going to use some drive. A five. A five. Okay. Uh, the ship is on fire. As you continue moving along, focus in, thinking of your hand, thinking of that oh, sensation monster. from earlier when you had touched the lapel of Augie upon first meeting them of that memory of that dark shadowed entity that you recall watching flee from the that furnace. And you feel, you sense that kind of, that endless cold, that need for warmth, that need for heat. And as you begin to blink your eyes back into focus, you can see that you have lost a few blocks and the rest of you are now approaching the outskirts of the Evnock Foundry. The massive smokestacks, some of many throughout this district, but the black columns of billowing foundry smoke now replaced with gray-white smoke and steam. Oh. So the foundry. Yes. Has, has in, our, in our journeys throughout the evening, has Arlo shared their experience? Experiences at the apartment with us. Like, do we know yeah. what you know at this point? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Did you say it was a? It almost had jewels on it. The figure, jeweled. Uh, no, not I jeweled. I feel like I remember some weird smooth words, but like I could have been a dis. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Is it smooth like an art, like art? Something. 
Oh, the 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 the, um, the, the box. Pole. You mean? Yes. Oh, uh, oh, it, never mind. it wasn't oh. jeweled. It was it was uh, <coughs> smooth and looked like it was intentionally sculpted mm -hmm. oh. with grooves dug into it that looked like some sort of intentional design. Okay. Okay. So at least we have a visual of what that kind of looked like. Mm -hmm. You okay. do. Yes. Yes. Is there any kind of, like, I don't know, how, I've never been to a foundry. Is there anything like a, a, an office or, a or guards or anyone there? Because since it's steaming 24 7, it seems. Indeed. Uh, it looks like there are office entrances on the left hand side. You can see some smaller windows and like an outcropping from this massive, you know, concrete like foundry structure uh, with a massive, like, double central front door that leads to the interior that is currently closed. Um, there are a number of doors on the side and it is dark from what you can tell. Uh, from the inside. Um, you do, however, see that two of the doors uh, are open and steam is billowing out from them, and you see two figures, two people come screaming out. Just, ah, ah, come running out into the night on hey, two different hey. sides. What's happened? What, what have you, what, ha what? Uh, uh. One of them runs up, it's kind of like wild blonde hair. You can see his look, his skin looks like it's been uh, kind of flash burn, uh, probably from hot steam or something, and kind of, his face is just red. He's like, ah, 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 there's something in there. Oh, the whole place is filled with smoke. Uh, you can use your, your, um, your bleed detector. Do we see it on him? Help him, doctor. Uh, Help him. Yeah, doctor. Help me! No, uh, Help me. PhD, not MD. Is he, uh, um, is he burnt? You're burned. Yeah, he, he has like they're not but, they're not serious burns, but you can do. There is like some some low level burns. So, uh, but uh, my specialty is in medical ethics, and I've met many doctors. I have a master's degree in chemistry. You don't care about any of this. <laughs> and as he's mumbling to himself, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my uh, safety equipment uh, oh, that I have, yeah. and uh, I'm gonna see if there's uh, any sort of chemical that I can to that that I would know that would neutralize like a chemical burn I'd say I'd say yes okay. uh, you would you would know that you have salves uh, specifically mm -hmm. um, for your own use because you do deal with dangerous chemicals and you want to make sure that you can treat your own uh, injuries in this process so you do have a few salves that could help and like and it looks like only like maybe his forearms and his face have been affected because the rest of him is still like wearing foundry clothing um, so it looks like this will be of, of help to him and I'm, I'm just listening to him scream into my face uh, yeah, he's like help, help me not good with feelings, but I'm just rubbing <laughs> lotion on his arms in any way that looks burned. Oh, 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 all thank right, you. all right. Thank you. It'll be all right. Oh. Is anyone else still in there? You hear a gunshot <laughs> on the inside. How many people? Oh, we're, uh, we're the late shift. We only go for another hour or so. Uh, it was eight of us in there at night. It's just kind of keeping the keeping the furnaces going, and then just started going dark. All the lights started going out, and then this place filled with steam, and then I heard screams, and I had to run. Keep running. Huh. To the hospital. Okay, okay. And he goes running off. We should go in. All right, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, uh, I've, I've got my cowl on, I'm gonna pop my hood on, I'm gonna put my safety goggles on from my safety kit, wrap a thing around my face, I'm just gonna walk in to the steam. We're gonna walk in. We're gonna walk into where people are running out of there? We're gonna let the dogs lead. Can I try to find a safe path? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Muffled. I duck, try to duck below any smoke and follow in. Yeah. After. Okay. Uh, upon getting closer and closer to the building, you hear two more gunshots, uh, and that ever-present <laughs> that odd sound of just massive moisture being turned to mist and steam emerging from the inside. Here. Maybe we yeah. shouldn't enter the building. Are we already in, or have we been you're, walking you're, you're just on the outskirts of it. You hear another scream on the inside. Oh. There's people inside. Yeah. There's people inside, and they're shooting at something. As long I don't, as they don't shoot at us when we go in. Uh, okay. This is one of those yeah. moments where we decide who we are. Indeed. In or out. 
Augie, I want you to stay behind. No, behind. you're not going in there, but... No, no, you're not going in there alone. And stay I behind. run in. I, sh I wrap my scarf around my face and I run in right after him. Great. Okay. I don't like the way you said great. Yeah. <laughs> this is dumb. Great for the story. Yeah, story. All right. Stories are fun. So have all of you charged into the foundry? God oh, damn it. Um. Did you did you detect bleed on him? We never. I'm uh, we never asked. We never. Oh, yeah. oh, on, oh yeah. we never asked. Sorry, on, on the gentleman who. Yeah. Ran out. Ran out. All right. So you go ahead and turn on the bleed detector. Not on him. Oh. He had nothing. I, is there another entrance? You can look for one. Yes. All right. Uh, for that, I would like you to go ahead and make a survey. Oh, test I'm very for me bad at intuition. this. Mm -hmm. God, I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna. Can I look for her? Get another. Here now. I don't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Was your roll? I rolled a three. A three. three. Okay. So you begin to I wander the outskirts three. of the structure, looking for another entryway. Um, what are you doing at this time? I was going. So you were already gone. Oh, so I've gone in. I'm. I'm yeah. trying to fold into the smoke already. All right. So the three of you. Stealthily. The three of you enter the building through the steam, kind of like keeping low, because it is. It is kind of rising up high, and it kind of stings your eyes a bit. But if you keep low enough, it's just hot. As you press in further, further. It gets colder and colder. As the steam seems to be subsiding, the inherent mass of heat that was once the foundry's bellows and furnaces slowly being as you begin to step within and you search on the outside. I wonder who. Where am I? Uh, um. You watch as one of the smokestacks stops. And you swear you can see a bit of frost kind of appear on the outside of it. Oh no. I'll turn around and, and run back into the, the foundry. Okay, you run back and the door they entered is currently closed and frosted open. Oh no. Um, oh no. Howard, do you, do, you, do you still have your lighter? Oh, certainly. Do with it as you wish. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to take the scuff off my hand and just keep the lighter in front of me, just in case if we see anything that requires us to, to like a decoy, a heat decoy, I'm going to light that on fire and throw it. Okay. As you begin to step beyond the offices uh, of the entry where you came through, you push past desks and paperwork scattered about and chairs that got knocked over as the people within the foundry immediately fled outside of it. You step into the main chamber of the central foundry itself. Steam rising up in plumes all around. You can see there are these massive grooves in the ground, these deep pits of concrete where you can see uh, molten metal had been poured and set to build beams for construction and other means of, of, of building throughout the city. You can see there are massive pores, these cauldron-like machines that are affixed by numerous thick chains above, uh, and there are uh, ladders that rise up to catwalks that go all across a second and third level up above. The entire height of this building is roughly 25 or so feet to 30 feet up from where the floor of it sits. Um, but you can only see it in parts because of these columns of steam that are, that are rising from where you can see the, the furnaces and bellows are all now just these cooled, low cinders. And ice has gathered around chunks of these structures, around parts of the ladders along parts of the catwalk, and you can see about five bodies, all frozen in places. You can see two on the catwalk above. There is one towards the center of the foundry. There's one towards the front of the massive double doors that open the front of the foundry itself for larger halls to be brought in or taken out. Um, and there is one that is to the left of where you are by the office. As you kind of glance over and look at the one to your left that's closest to you, you see just the faintest bit of blue light begin to appear about three feet above where the frozen body stands. That slowly begins to take the shape of a humanoid form. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is the same, this is the same that has happened in the apartment, yes? Well, I didn't see that thing before, but the, everything turned to ice like this. Uh, Arlo. Oh, damn, where is she? Oh, Which, and, Arlo, and, what are you doing? 
Um, pushing on the door. <laughs> Anything? Uh, <laughs> if you'd like to make a strike test yeah, right. to see if you can somehow break the ice that encases the doorway and force it open. Oh! Oh, I take the lower. It's a fail. Oh, <laughs> damn. Um, You're desperately pushing and pushing, and you <laughs> slam into it once more, not realizing that some of the ice that got there on the side has a bit of a jagged edge to it and end up taking your gray hand and like shush, impaling it slightly on the piece of ice. It doesn't hurt, but as you pull away, you can see there is now a gash in it where it's open. You can see what would be exposed flesh instead looks almost like just a vacuous void of nothing beyond the torn skin. I do want you to take a body. Okay. Change of tactic. Um, are there any vehicles on the street? When you look around, there is a large, uh, it looks like a, like a hauling wagon with wheels um, for carrying massive amounts of materials. And you can see there's, uh, it looks to be piles of ingots, like melted uh, metal ready for uh, crafting and utilized in all sorts of, of metallic construction, as well as uh, stone, uh, chains and tools and such that are pushed upon it, but like it's like a massive truck-like vehicle. Can I go see if it's open? Yeah, you go, you go in and the, the side of it, it, it's, it is open. Uh... I'm going to try to turn it off. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, these sort of, of vehicles uh, are relatively new to New Fair. Um, yes, but our family does have an electric carriage. Indeed. So I'm used to driving. I would like you to, uh, let's go ahead and make a focus. It's okay. Test if you don't mind. See if I can remember how to drive it? See if you can remember I how can to also, drive it. I can also, it says control is in charge of driving as well. That's true, actually. I mean, either way, it's the same I'll, I'll say you can choose. Either control or focus is your... Okay. Because this is less about controlling the actual vehicles, it's more about knowing how to operate something that is very different from what you're used to, but trying to allocate that knowledge from one to the other. Oh, that's dumb, Laura. What? <laughs> which one was which? I wasn't looking. I, I, that one I saw this was a one? five, but I don't know what the rest of them were because I couldn't see where they went. I this one looks like a five, that one looks like a five. They're all mixed in. I think that five was one of your rolls okay. on, the right, okay. on the right side there. Okay, yeah. okay. Then five. Five, okay, it's a mixed success. <laughs> I don't see any like major, like full successes, so we're safe. No worries, so you head to the front of the vehicle and you see what the crank is and you start one. <clears throat> cranking it. Eventually, it picks up and. Sure. <laughs> get back in the vehicle, and it's heavy. It's 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 got this in, intense vibration to it, and it, even as you begin to kind of like try and and shift it a bit, kind of change the gears a bit, you can feel some of the stuff in the back of it that's not currently tied down. Shift. It's it's not ready for hauling. That's okay. I'm just going to drive forward and try to drive it into the doors. Oh, that's a girl. Like make a drive test. That's <laughs> nuts. Oh, my girl. Oh, Control. Come on, come on, come on. There's airbags, right? <laughs> We've got airbags. <laughs> she is the airbag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 I'm going to use my last drive. You got it. Yeah. You got it. You left my drive. Drive, 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 Resistance and cunning and intuition. No! I can't even re-roll it. No! Oh, no! <laughs> so, you manage to essentially, you don't know how to turn it around. It's too big and too wide, so you just back up as hard as you can into the entryway to this foundry. You just, it's about a 30, 40 foot uh, strip of, of, of space between the two and you slam into this as hard as you can. It hits and the door cracks a bit open. However, as soon as the vehicle stops moving, some of the poles oh, no. that are resting in the back of this, Final Destination style, come rocketing through oh. the back from where you're currently sitting and 
Thankfully, you're an intuitive entity who has attuned yourself to the dangers of the world, and there's something, something here that tells you to duck desperately. Um, not fast enough to not take a heavy knock to the head. Crack! As two of the poles go shooting through the front, and one hits it, you take a body mark. And the door is partially damaged, but not fully open. I can't get out! While that's happening, <laughs> while that's happening, you all are inside right now, you, and you can see now the various frozen bodies, the steam rising to the center of this foundry, and indeed that kind of slowly apparating bit of ghost. Can we see any of the others? No, just the one that's right next to you. Uh, it's not that nice. <laughs> it is funny, but oh goodness. Um, uh, what do you do in these situations? Uh, uh, I'm gonna tear up the scarf and start with one, uh, light it on fire and just put it right in, like, in front of us and back up. Okay. You all kind of back away from it with the scarf there. The spirit evaporates and you can see it takes on the humanoid limbs of the frozen body below it. And it kind of, you watch its jaw extend and stretch the vacuous dark eyes like Donald's. It becomes this a ghastly, horrifying nightmare being that reaches for the heat and embraces it, and the flames immediately snuff as it does. There's a brief glimmer of nightmarish uh, euphoria on its face, and as you all have backed away about 15 or so feet from where it is, you can see it kind of look around, confused, and then slowly pull back and just become this kind of faint glowing blue orb above the body, just resting. Keep going. Go further away. Go further in. Go. You can't shoot these things. What do you do? I don't know. I, uh, when you first mentioned that Arlo was not there, it was the first time I clocked it. Mm -hmm. So there's no way I'm gonna, I just, I can't leave, I'm not gonna leave her behind. Yeah. <laughs> At which yeah. moment, you immediately hear this yeah. heavy boom, this impact that echoes throughout the interior. The whole foundry kind of shakes, and you can see bits of ice kind of fall from different places within the interior of the foundry. Uh, it echoes, it is, it is a loud bang. It's gonna get a lot of attention. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm gonna take off back toward where, where we came from, the, 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 the door. Where we came in. Okay, you go back to the door, and poof, indeed, it's like closed and yeah. kind of currently. I will say uh, the impact on the foundry from this seems to have cracked a bit of the ice. If you were yeah. to attempt to kick it open or something, you could certainly I'm try that. Drag Augie back. This is too dangerous to have him in here. Let's go. I'll uh, drag him back to him. Okay. Yeah, I'll well, kick. As you're doing this. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you both do what you're doing and yeah. come back to you. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll kick a piece of rebar from off the ground into my hand and. Uh, Try, kind of try to jam to the door and see if I can just muscle and pry it open. Yeah, let's go and make a strike. Strike test for me. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a drive. Go for it. I would like our ghost person to be here with ghosts. Fuck all fails. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> you have a resistance you want to spend? Or? Yes, oh. I should be good at this. <laughs> That's the one thing. Roll two on there then. <gasps> That's right. I don't get to use my drive. And then, but I, it, but it's not the worst. It's not a disadvantage, right? No. Okay. Well, you still have two on there. Oh my God. Snake eyes. No. No. Shit. Wow. The snake eyes do not want me to wow. enter. Wow. They do not Apparently, want me to Apparently, you are striking, <laughs> <laughs> trying to break off the ice, trying to break off the handle, trying to do whatever you can to get through this. Um, oh and it's, it's just, it's. Barring you from getting through, uh, that noise and the impact of that as both of you are deciding to back up, you watch as something just kind of darts through the mist, through the steam. Some sort of shape, just kind of like a bird, like the shadow of a bird. Almost winged, but they're not wings. Just something disappears through the steam, through the mist. Grab all these hands and I keep moving backwards with eyes in that direction, keep moving towards that door. Moving towards him. Out of the nearby mist, you almost see it begin to roll and spin like, like a breeze is blowing through the steam. And as it does, you see a face made of shadow begin to just push through, invisible to the eye if not for the middle of this steam bath that's been created. You see its form for a second, its eyes glowing a faint, angry orange. The mouth opens up 
<laughs> as it darts towards you, and you instinctually duck out of the way as it darts into the chamber as you're trying to smash this door, and instead it strikes right into your body from behind. You feel your entire form begin to seize up in pain. Uh, you take a bleed, my friend. You immediately kind of like turn around and try and pull away from this striking pain. How does this bleed affect you? How does it st strike its way into your perception? Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the strangest part is it's familiar. Uh, it, it harkens back to a memory from a year ago and it fills me with guilt and revulsion and shame and uh, it, it affects my mind which is one of the, the most, the highest guarded place of me. Uh, and it's, it's the worst experience. You hear a voice ring through your mind. You fool. That memory strikes and you take a brain as well. Oh, oh no, you no. did it to yourself. You all do, you snake eyes. But as you wrestle yourself away from this frozen form, you do manage to force the door just barely open before you stumble and tumble onto the ground. You turning around and seeing this shadow creature kind of turn up and then vanish into the secondary floor, just spectrally disappearing through the solid matter and return somewhere within the family. I run to him and, and, uh, uh, how, how it, yes? I won't even bother to ask you all right. Can we go? Let's go. It's about this time that uh, Arlo stumbles out of the vehicle, blood pouring down one side of her face. I, I'm kind of like half out the door, and I just sort of wave. Did it work? No. Oh. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be going help her. I'll grab him and put his arm around m my shoulder. Unless you put a man with a mind of your own. Did we find it? Did we find the beast? We found it. We still don't know how to defeat it, and we still don't know how to stop it. We still don't know how to capture it. We don't okay, know. Maybe we can find one of those fuel things and, and capture it back inside of it. That's exactly. It. So we should find it within the foundry, right? Is it within the foundry, or is it somewhere around the foundry? Then isn't that what? Uh, Live the dimension that one of them they gave to the foundry as part of their usual drop off, and then one was given to Donald. To Donald, and that would have been taken by the OUP. So we have to find the find one the that source of the cold. Be 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 because I know what it looks like. Mm hmm. Is there, is there anywhere I can do like a check out if I can see it? You can if, if you if, if you I'm still inside. Go in. If you go back in. You can can I get, is okay. the door open enough that I can come in? Oh yeah, he, he bashed through the door. Okay. I'm just Are we good to go in, or should we leave? <clears throat> I have a theory if you're willing to hear it. I would love to. Uh, I'm not certain this is the source of our woes, but just perhaps the food of our woes. Uh, are you familiar with the law of thermodynamics? Entropy? Uh, oh yeah, of course! Uh, the long and short of it is, I believe we unleashed something, and it has a hunger for heat, and we've simply stumbled upon its dining space. This may not be the place to trap it or hurt it or defeat it. I believe we've just wandered into its feeding grounds. But I could be incorrect. It's a highly unsubstantiated theory at this point. So oh. it's just a hungry ghost? But if my theory doesn't hold and we can't trap it within the rock again. We may. Then maybe if they put enough heat on the other rock, then We'll create two of these shadow beasts Whoa. by accident. So we should probably find it regardless. Right? All right, I'm gonna take a pieces. I'm really good at hiding. I'm just gonna go in there and I'm just gonna just look real quick. It's okay, it's okay. All right, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna try to just... Sneak through out? Sneaky peekies, maybe take a quick it, did you say that there was like a little office area? That There's we an office in? area where you, where you all first entered through, okay. and then the back door of that opens into the foundry proper. Okay, I'll check in the office. And all the bodies are in the foundry. All the bodies are in the foundry, correct. Oh, yeah, let's search the office. I'll check, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check I'll, the I'll, office. I can't let him go in there okay. by himself, so. Uh, go ahead and make a survey. 
test under intuition for can, me, if you don't we mind. Both do it. Or right. only one? Hmm? We both do it, or only one? Well, if one of you wants to do it, the other can help. Uh, Your is better me. than mine. Yeah, you want, just help me. Do it. Yeah. Help. <clears throat> um, let me. I'm gonna do this. Saw this coming again. So you get. Uh, I'm gonna show you without spending a drive by staying here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna assist you by looking around and telling you what I saw, what it looks like. I know what we're doing. You're so much younger, you have such better vision. I have really good eyes. <laughs> Eagle eyes, they call me. Four. Four, okay, so it makes success. So you're going to the office and you start scouring the space as quickly as you can. Everything in here looks like it is formal paperwork. It looks like it is uh, ledgers. It looks like it is documentation of contracts they've signed with the different uh, guilds and, and figures around the, the city to keep things going, and you're starting to get frustrated. And then as you're glancing like by the doorway that leads into the foundry, uh, you also see what looks to be uh, large containers, like metallic containers that hold, hold all sorts of coal and fuel that are often shoveled into the various furnaces to run the foundry. Grab just grab oh, wait, you find the, the whole container? You're just grabbing the whole container? How big is it? It's like a barrel? Uh, it looks like there's there's three or four of them that are about six and a half feet tall and about four feet wide each, and they're all just filled with. Uh, I mean, can we dump yeah, them? Like, yeah, they're, they're inside the foundry. Yeah. Like, oh. like they're inside. Oh. They're inside. So the See, that's oh. where it's gonna be. All right. All right. What if I just do a sneaky? I'm really good at being sneaky. Just a quickie. I can't tell you what to do. Okay. I'm gonna. Keep I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to go. If you see a shadowy beast coming towards you, don't, the fuck yeah, out. don't go towards it. She okay. may have just been in an automobile accident, but yeah, this is sound you're advice. You're bleeding out of your head. <laughs> and you're, you look a mess. Thank you. Okay, okay, I'll be two, two seconds, two seconds. All right. All right, you're sneak in there. All right, I will have, go ahead and uh, roll hide under cunning for me. If you don't mind, go ahead and test that. Hide under cunning, okay, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. Um, Oh, there's um, a hide. We could have taken skills and hide. Yeah. I should have done that, or yeah, really anything else. With these, you know what? I'm also gonna spend a drive. Oh wait, I didn't do anything. So you have. Oh wait, I didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. 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 Come yeah. on, baby. You need this. All right. All right. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. We got a six. We got a six. Woo! We got a six. That's a success. Okay. So as you're sneaking through, Bob, the steam wait. still rising around here, you can see the shape. <gasps> Darting through occasionally hearing. <clears throat> as it moves through, it looks like it's searching, seeking new sources of heat, um, and is just kind of avoiding the space where you are. You go near the one of the ice bodies and you see that kind of, as you get closer, you can see there's like a faint blue orb that begins to apparate at your proximity and you just kind of move away and it dissipates and you begin to pick up the sense that these these spirits that are locked in place are drawn to the proximity of heat. So you feel safe at about a 15-foot distance from them as you begin to move through and around. You begin to eventually move past the, the dying orange glow of the nearest uh, foundry divot where that thick molten kind of steel and, and the, the burning materials are now growing cold and you head over towards these massive <clears throat> containers with what looks like large, small bricks and bricks of uh, fresh coal and other burnable materials. Those are bigger than I thought they'd be. Okay, um, I'm gonna just quietly try to just start searching. All right, I would like, I would like you to make a survey test to try and... Okay, I'm gonna use a drive. How big is this container of coal? Uh, there's, uh, there's four of them, and they are six and a half feet by four foot. Oh, is okay, this, okay. Is this foundry, I would imagine it's mostly made of metal, not wood. Uh, concrete metal. Am I close enough that I could help him or no? You can try and sneak in to help if you'd like. Mm. Engine boost this shit. Are there furnaces around? That we can see. There are two furnaces in the middle of the chamber, two massive ones, uh, but they're both, they're they're there's like a very faint, warm glow of light. And they're almost out. Torpedoes 
They're all ones. Can you use a resistance? Can you roll again? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. This is like. I keep forgetting those. This reminds me. We can't me. help. We can't give advantage on this. Nope. This is like in Maverick at the end when he doesn't look at the card. Uh, spoiler alert. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. Stop. How many points do you have in that? <laughs> what? Your dice. One. So you get one dice to roll. Okay. Unless you want to spend more. Not the new, not Top Gun Maverick. Oh, old yeah. Maverick. Like the yield, the tiny like, Maverick. Yeah, yeah Mel Gibson spoiler. card. Watch the movie. Yeah. Um. Or you can just leave it up to fate. I love it. No, that looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> do it, Augie! Do it! Let's go! Oh, my boy. Ah, that was a cut. That rolled over other it did, dice. It did, it did, it did. That doesn't seem one. fair. Oh, dude. It literally, like, rolled over I know, over it really did. That's not it was, it was, it was a That was worth a shot. Okay. So, so, as you're looking through, like, you're peering through, moving around, some of them, like, following and making a little bit of noise, like, shit, shit, you're moving through. Uh, what you don't notice is what you see across the way is suddenly, after the thing has been flying around, you. You don't notice it moving anymore. And then just out of the floor, right behind Augie, the dark shadow emerges. And I scream, here! And I light my scarf on fire and I throw it on the floor. Here! You got it. Uh, you scream this at the same time that the creature kind of runs its long shadow claws up through Augie's body. No. You feel like all of your internal organs instantaneously spot freeze within you. You feel all the muscles seize up, and for a brief moment, you remember what it was like once again to have your spirit jettisoned from your body from that detonation. Uh, you take a bleed and a body, and I need you to explain to me how you are affected by this bleed corruption. Okay, um, so I feel like it tastes a little bit like iron, and, and it feels like a, a microcurrent, like electricity kind of moving all around, and it hurts. Um, and I think I'm, I'm just really scared. Okay. As that sensation leaves you and you fall to your knees, you cough and you can see like black liquid just onto the ground, which then spot freezes onto the ground, it almost cracks. Um, the shadow entity flickers up and you screaming out. As I, is it possible, I would like to mm -hmm. attempt to like Dive behind something to hide. Dive and, and get, as I'm getting closer to him, some godforsaken way parkour my way out of this. The 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 burning flame does seem to have caught its attention. Mm -hmm. uh, now you could make a hide test to see how well you can use it to distract enough to get you past it. Excellent. Can I, we do the same? I want to try to just run. Once the thing is on fire, I'm going to just try to run towards Augie. I'm not even hiding. I'm just trying to run towards yeah. Augie and the fuel sources. Okay. And, and you are, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if that, if that, if that's the most immediate threat to the, to the group, for sure. Yeah. I'll go for Augie. Just trying, okay. That's what we're all trying to do. I'm just trying to parkour, parkour. Sorry. Um, I'm going to use <laughs> two cunning drive, not resistance. I used the right <laughs> word this time. One, two. So I get one die, and then I used two. This is a high stakes roll, correct? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm checking what I can actually do. Um, six. Yes! yes! Nice. So, as you ignite the scarf and throw it, the scarf lands, and as it hits the ground, it looks like uh, some of the scattered uh, charcoal materials nearby actually catches well, and it becomes a brief bonfire, about two feet wide. It begins to ignite. The creature sweeps into it, and it hits it, and the flame flickers out, but then kind of begins to recatch, uh, resisting the immediate flash of uh, cold that's flushed upon it. You can see crystals emerge around it, and parts of the outside of the uh, the briquette kind of freeze over, but the flame emerges and begins to melt it. Um, in this instant, you kind of run and dart around the side. The other two of you kind of running across the way to you all meet up with Augie. Charlie, and that's how would do either of you carry a flask? Never been a drinking man, sorry. Of course I do. Save that. Next fuel source. Yes. 
Um, and I'm gonna use the bleed detector on the, the fuel sources and see if I can sense where that stone might be. As you engage the bleed detector, looking in this space, in this brief kind of intense moment, uh, you glance around uh, and I would need you to go ahead and make a survey roll. A survey. Um, or somebody make one, but. Like a, or a sense? Yeah, maybe a sense Actually, roll? Actually, you can make a sense as well okay, because that is yeah. where you are definitively. Okay, yeah. This is opposed to like like looking for it, more like using this to amplify your ability to feel its presence and kind of guide you like a beacon. Okay, I'm gonna, so I'm adding two dice and I get a gilded as well on this. Anybody helping? Just in case he's, we're good? I can't, yeah. okay. mine roll out. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I got a, a mixed success. A mixed success, yes. you got it. Uh, as you focus your eyes, you, even behind your eyelids, extending this, you can feel your gray hand. The like, glove is off. Yeah, it's drawn in a direction, almost like it's pulling you again. And as you kind of let it do so, your hand pushes through this pile of fuel, of, of, of coal rocks. And you kind of push past, the eyes go closed until you grab something and pull back and tumbles out, making noise as you do. And you pull free a cylindrical-like structure about this big uh, that is made of what looks like smoothed obsidian with caps on the end, but it is intricately carved with all manner of what looks like glyphs or runes or language that you do not recognize. Uh, it is just pure black and cold to the touch. Uh, and as you kind of look at this and realize what you hold in your hand, you you know this, this is and it's at this moment, as you all are kind of looking at this with surprise, the shattered hand emerges from the center of your chest from behind. The shattered claw of this ghostly entity pushing through your sternum. Your eyes go white, and you feel as the bleed begins to strike from within and spread outward. You take another bleed. Does it come close to my necklace? It does. Then I'm going to say that it's my bleed ward. Uh, my ward soak, rather. Oh yeah. Soaks one of the bleed. So as as the arm goes through your necklace, flashes with a bright burst of almost like a localized sunlight. As it does, the hand withdraws, and the creature pulls away and darts away, like almost like it it was burned by the proximity of this this relic you have. What do we do with it? How do we open it? May I? Don't, don't, don't open it. Uh, I'm going to take it, and I'd like to look over it for uh, any like discerning marks, even the, from, from Old Fair, anything that I would possibly know. I'd like a focus test from you. Oh, See God. if you can ascertain the nature of what oh, this is. I wish means. I could help you. I don't have any more drive. should be good at it, but maybe I'm not. Find out. A uh, four on the gilded. Four on the gilded. So you get a drive back. That's great. And that is a mixed success. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, looking it over, notice that in the scaffolding above you, or at least to the left of you, two of the bodies that are frozen, you've like moved a little bit close to, and the glowing blue orbs of spirits that hang are beginning to form into their spiritual bodies and slowly drift in your direction. You've drawn the attention of some of these other spirits. By glancing at it, you can see these, these carvings in here. Uh, you don't understand the language at all, but it looks like they are grooves for something to be placed against them. It looks like something is meant to activate it. Something is meant to fill these grooves. Do we see? Do, do we see those things? Do, do I see those things? Uh... You do also, yeah. As you all kind of like glancing, and you see, um, like, I'm gonna immediately open the flask and pour pour a little bit of alcohol out and light it and. Back up. Let's get the fuck back out of here. Yeah. The two spirits immediately begin to convene towards the alcohol fire that you've left behind. I'm gonna think about. Do you do you say that out loud that you know something's supposed to be going in those runes? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, yes. yeah, absolutely. Then I'm. Gonna, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna think back to Eddie, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna bite my hand as hard as I can and try to. Put some blood in those groups and see if it does anything. Okay, you you bite your hand, your left hand. Oh, why did I do that? I have a fucking shitty blood all over my face. <laughs> I'm, why did I do that instead? 
<laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> hey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you do have plenty of blood on your face. Yeah. And as you wipe it free, you go ahead and place your hand onto this uh, device. As you do, it begins to get warmer to the touch. And you watch as the red coloration of your exposed blood begins to seep and fill the grooves along the exterior of this device. Uh, just parts of it. Not quite enough blood to completely encompass all of the markings that are drawn across it, but it seems to be almost absorbing what you rubbed across it. Is it it's warmer? It feels to the touch. Uh, I want to look around at the uh, apparitions and see if they're reacting to this at all. Is this uh, the apparitions, the only two that have uh, that are the natural spirits that were kind of left behind are currently absorbing and, and quenching the flame that you ignited while you're all backing out towards the entrance. Um, you just now, after seeing that, the shadow entity flee for a moment, you can see it's now rising back up in the center of the foundry. And now you get a kind of a, a closer look of it in the midst of the steam. You can now see it has a humanoid form, its feet, its legs kind of drift into a long shadow tail, but you can almost see shoulders and a head like armor that you don't recognize, a, uh, a warrior headdress that is uh, multiple metallic-like quills that almost run off the back of its head. It looks like it is adorned in some sort of ceremonial battle that you've never seen before, and its kind of glowing eyes fit within the center of that shadow structure, and you see it rise up in the center. Its jaw extends, its arms go black, and the shadow form becomes almost immaterial as it begins to dive through the mist in your direction. I, need this. I, I immediately go like this, and you see I, I, there's a little bit of wax in my hand. And you, as I pull forward, you see a hidden jackknife just appear into my hand from my sleeve. I flip it open, I cut my hand open, and I put it on the. Okay, mark a body. Yes. As you wound yourself and place your hand on the opposite side of what you're holding. Uh, and Howard, as you're kind of clutching it, you watch as the rest of the blood that's pulled from Charlotte's body begins to seep into the rest of the grooves until each one of them is filled with that deep red coloration. The minute it is, the red begins to brightly glow into a reddish-orange color. At I this, certainly hope we're correct about this theory. As you kind of hold oh. it in your hand, <laughs> the shadowed entity <laughs> comes <laughs> streaking <laughs> towards you <laughs> angrily, its arms out in front. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to do any of this! <laughs> As you set it down, it kind of like <laughs> under the ground, and the shadow creature kind of swoops up and seems to take in the sight of what you've just set before it. And it spins to go just as the runes glow brightly, and you watch as these red tethers whip out like dozens of tentacles that just wrapping around it before pulling it back into this chunk of ancient obsidian before it just goes quiet. Can you believe that worked? Well, neither can I. Are there still blue spirits around us? Little orbs. You look around you at the other bodies, and you see all the orbs indeed have formed into the spiritual bodies of the humans that lie frozen at the floor beneath them. And as they all kind of Stand there, floating in the air. You swear you can hear voices say, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As they all just drift away into nothing, passing to where other boundaries await them beyond the fire. We shouldn't touch that. Maybe wrap it in our coats. I'm going to take off my jacket and wrap it around it. Yeah. Pick it up. It's still heavy to the touch, but you're not directly contacting it with your skin. We should get out of here before. We need to get this to Alex. I'm um, taking whatever little remnants remain of my scarf and wrap it around my hand. And I don't okay. even I'm, don't even look at you, and I just take your hand and go. Okay. Can we, is the way to get out of here quickly? Indeed. As you're heading towards the exit of the foundry, you can see a number of unmarked electric carriages begin to approach from the outside that you recognize to be commonly used by the OUP. We should go in a different direction. 
Is there, is there another, another exit, exit that we know from... There, there are back exits, too. Let's do that. Let's go that way. Okay. So you go ahead and push out <clears> the, the rear portion of this. As you do, the temperature is notably warm within this foundry. You can hear the drips of rapidly melting ice, no longer held by whatever dark spiritual presence that turned this place into a massive freezer. You shove off into now the dark, early hour of morning, sifting through the alleys of the steel. And you are currently heading to... Um, is that a, the, I, like a Candela safe house type thing that we There know are a of? few spots in the city where you know contacts can lead you into like some hidden rooms back. You head to um, this small, uh, kind of like a, an eclectic bookstore that sits on the outskirt uh, the outskirts of the the varnish uh, that's called the uh, the gilded rainbow mm. and it's a it's a small little kind of looks like a family owned place uh, and you step inside and you can see the uh, the man who runs it is this rather uh, handsome in his older age gentleman with kind of like Reed Richards looking hair a bit of a scruffy <laughs> beard uh, glasses and a, a long pipe that kind of comes down to here which is currently pouring over a book in front these late hours. Um, and you know, no bookstore in this right now would be open for business at this hour, but this is definitely not in the bookstore. And as you enter, uh, uh, Reggie, as you know him by, kind of grants over the rest of you. It's rather late for arrivals. Uh, you look a bit worse for wear. I assume your assignment has been uh, taking its toll? Uh, completed, I, I believe, for the most part. We were part of an uh, industrial accident. Understood. Well, um, who is your light keeper? Alex O'Neill. I'll reach out to uh, Alexandra, and uh, you may clean up in the back room. <laughs> closes his book, takes a puff off his pipe, and goes and closes and locks the front door. As we're cleaning up, uh, I haven't looked at Augie for some time, and then finally, when I do, I came to Candela because of something that happened to me when I was your age. Something nobody should have had to see at your age, or at mine. I came here to make sure it didn't happen to any other child to try to do my best to keep that from happening. Now, I have seen plenty of things in this universe that are terrifying, truly terrifying. I don't need you to create them for me. I need you to stay safe, do you understand? I understand. I'm also very proud of you. That was probably the craziest night I've ever had. <laughs> you haven't spent any nights in the red light district then, have you? Well, <laughs> I, it, is, there, is everyone okay? <laughs> and you? Crashed a truck into a building. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't work. <laughs> I'll have to send payment to them, I believe. <sighs> May I see the, the object? Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm gonna. It's still wrapped in my coat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, gonna look around for <clears throat> old, what was his name? The older gentleman. Reggie. 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 He's still in the back. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> pull a, uh, a larger tome off one of the shelves and lay it on a desk and, and take the object out and set it on the tome and just kind of roll it into the page so that it makes like a, an imprint of it <laughs> and then Smart. pull the book back up and give it back. So, uh, oh. Thank you, Arlo. Oh, you're a clever man. Brilliant. There's a reason he's a professor. That was actually pretty cool. A short time later, 
you hear the front door open. And coming in from the now softening rain of the evening weather, Lightkeeper Alexandra steps in. Are you all sending it like shit? But um, Reggie tells me that you had quite the night out and uh, what around town is there's been uh, been quite a quite a scuffle in a very pissed off OUP on the outside of a foundry. So, you're alive and successful. Ah, don't set it on fire. Oh, yes. Good to know. Do you know the nature of what uh, did this? He seemed like a, a warrior, a warrior spirit. Ancient. Yes, definitely from Old Bear. Hmm. I wonder if this was either a burial right or it was a punishment. He seemed like he did not want to go back in. Well, poor boy. Hasn't been your night, has it? <laughs> we'll get it to our researchers and see if we can ascertain the historical connections for this individual may be, as well as the incantation that binds it, and if there are more to be discovered so we can keep them from creating more mischief and losses in the future. Alexandra? Yes? Can you let Candela know that I would like some of my donations to be rerouted to the Clara House. Certainly. Thank you. I can have that done. Really You've done well. Damn it. We'll have a freshly forged satellite, so. And a freshly thought, inducted sir. member of Candela Obscura. if I want to be a member of this club because this was this was a bit much oh but Augie you were so wonderful was... truly you were very brave and I've never seen anyone hide as well as you mm. and I would have said if you're going to learn about terrifying Don't things I'd rather you do it next to me Alexandra grabs a Don't chair and scoops up and sits like right directly in front of you eye to eye Look, I'll be You don't have to do it. You can walk out of here and never see something else. That's entirely up to you. Unfortunately, like the rest of us, you know what you've seen. And you know what's out there. That'll never leave you. What you've done tonight, whether or not you believe it, has saved the lives of innumerable people. what you could do in the future can save you anymore. But that choice is yours when the time comes. There's no pressure here. We don't do this. Most of us don't do it because we like it. It's because if we don't, we will. Mm. And there's far worse people out there than the OUP. They're at least just incompetent. Mm. There are others that have more, um, malevolent interests with the sort of things you've seen. So, you do what you will. I know that we respect that, and even just your time tonight is appreciated. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll think on it. Think on it. Regardless, on behalf of Candela, thank you all very much. I think it's time we all got some rest. The sun should be rising in the next few hours. I think you can probably take some time off, maybe. Oh, but you have a gentleman waiting for you, don't you? Oh, <laughs> Can't keep him waiting. <laughs> he did have a nice frame. Mm. Mm. Some different tastes for different people. But he did help us. And hey, Reggie. It's like Gibber. You've got a you've got a guest room back here, eh? Yes, I do. Well, I mean, hasn't been hasn't really found anyone to take up the rent here as of late. Why? Well, if you need a place to stay, at the very least, Candela's happy to 
give you all the books you can read. Nice bed to sleep in. Reggie's not the worst company. Back out. But what's the rent gonna cost? All right. Make you pay it tonight. All right. Thank you. With that, I have a business to attend to. My night is not over. Hmm. Till we meet again. Hopefully, long from now. Hmm. She pulls her coat up, puffs once more off her cigar, and exits off into the night. Yeah. It's a step up from a cot in an office. Hey, anything's a step up from a hard street. Hmm. What's the name of this bookstore again? It's the Gilded Rainbow. Gilded Rainbow. Uh, I think she's right. I think it's time we all found some rest. It'll be okay, yes? Yeah. We'll be fine. You always know where I am. Do you believe you'll be staying here, Aki? I think so. I think so. I, I think this is... This is the nicest place I've ever stayed in. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna stay, so if you ever need to find me... It's gonna be right here. I do like to find a good book every now and then. Mm. I believe we'll be visiting. He, he's probably gonna... He'd be just lots of books for you here. Doctor, certainly. And, and by the way, for the record tonight, I would give your performance a C minus, but <laughs> All there right. is room for improvement. Trust me, from him, that's a compliment. Thank you, Professor. As you all begin to scatter off to your evening's rest, to find your daily activities and recovery from the events mm. of the previous evening. We'll conclude this venture here, the first outing as the Circle of the Vassal in the Veil, vale, under Candela Obscura in the city of Nunfair. Yes. Uh, that being the case, let's go ahead and take your Candela Circle sheet yes. and oh. mark your progress here. Okay, okay. Yes. So going to the illumination yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. Are you okay. in charge? Okay. You're in charge. Oh, charge. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Charge. You're in the, charge. I'll be bookkeeper. Perfect. At the end of a session, we have some questions to get through. <laughs> okay. Did you contain or destroy a source of bleed? Yeah, yes, you did. That's one point. <laughs> did you provide comfort or support for those affected? Yeah. Yes. 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 Did? You yes. Someone rubbed, rubbed the salve on a man. man. You slathered a nice man up. Yeah. You yeah. did. Yes. You yes. did. Greased him. Greased him. Oh. Well. Delicious. Straight to the nice. elbow. Nice. <laughs> did you bring something of importance back for Candela Obscura to study? Yes, we did. Yes, you did. Yeah. That's three points there. Covered in blood. But and you have at the bottom of your sheet XP triggers. As long as each of you hit one, raise your hand if you hit one of your XP triggers. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, just so everyone knows where we go around here, what was your XP trigger? Making a deal. Making a deal, yeah. awesome. Deceive. Great. I acted bizarre. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mentored an alley, an ally, but not an alley. Hello, young alley. Come uh, under my wing. <laughs> Perfect. So that's so that, one for each person. One for each person. Yeah. That's four additional points in the illumination Ooh, chart. We're going to get a bold circle next. Great. Yeah, our next circle that we fill in is bold. I don't know what that means, but it's... It's a milestone, <gasps> which can affect some of the uh, abilities in the circle. <gasps> now, that being the case, okay, okay, okay. we also have Kenda Abdullah, uh, Kendella Abdullah, Kendella Obscura <laughs> resources to spend. Okay. There should be five in each stitch, refresh, and train. Now, these resources do not refresh until you complete the illumination track. The so, these have to last you through the end of the tracks going, which means oh, for our next couple games. Exactly. Got so it. these are the last two for the rest of the next two sessions. So the first ones, the stitches, a person can spend one to just clear all of the marks they've taken. Now remember, uh, three marks, you're still okay. Once you get a fourth mark, you get a scar. It doesn't mean you're dead, it just means you get a scar, which you have to change 
basically change one ability or one of the uh, action points to another place that kind of describes the scars change to you. But a stitch does clear your, your marks on your body, mind, or body, brain, and bleed. Refresh gives all your drives back and your uh, resistances. And train, you can spend them to give yourself a dice that you can use on any roll during your next assignment. So you got five of each to last you, basically for your three episode arc. So how do you want to divide these? I'm how many of each? Five? Five of each. Five of each. Okay. The whole time. So if we think about it, let's think of it like mathematically, that we shouldn't do that. I would say like each of us would get three of these things to use as we want over the next few games, but that's but stupid if somebody has like a... Yeah, someone but it's has one, more. But it's one yeah. slot, but it's one slot per die per person. Exactly. So we could pick two, half of us to have it for the next game and then have three, have a little more for... The next, our, our going into yeah. the third? Third game, yeah. mm-hmm. because maybe that's yeah. when we would need it. Yeah. 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 Like that or or just give one one out this time and load up for the the next one. The oh, big I feel like yeah. I used I definitely did not think smartly and I used all of my drives yeah, in you this refresh. game. So I've you gotta refresh. You have refresh. refresh. Or else I won't. Refresh. Did anybody else make the same stupid Amanda. mistake as me? Um I did not use all of them, but I certainly used some that I could really use back. I mean, we have four refresh left. I, I will definitely be smarter with my usage in the next game. Yeah. So, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay. I'm a little bummed I used one of my resistances because we would get that back with the refresh, right? Right. And but I only have a brain. I only have a brain and a bleed, and I feel like I, that's not areas that maybe I would typically take damage. So, so maybe I'll chill and maybe just take a. A dice for this round? Oh yeah, take a train. Maybe I'll take a train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So mark, mark that on your character sheet. Okay. It's like you're, you have yeah. a train dice somewhere. And like I could like when we're playing, I could like set it out to remind myself. Correct. If the there next session goes as poorly as this one did, as far <laughs> as body goes, then I will definitely be like losing a limb or something in the next game. Yeah. So maybe I should stitch myself up in this one. I support that decision. I don't need a stitch. I mean, I just cut my hand open. No big deal. You um, took some serious body. Time. You no, went, I two, yeah. I have two body, but I mean, and one bleed, and one bleed. Yeah. And you one should brain. probably. Oh, you got four marks. <laughs> you got four oh, marks. You take a stitch. Yeah, take a stitch. Yeah, take a stitch. Can we fix up Can my that little, gets rid little, of everything? Boy? Yeah. Yep. So that's but, stitch and a stitch. Okay. And a refresh. Okay. And I'll take a refresh. And you'll take a refresh. Okay. Stitch and a stitch, refresh and a refresh. All right. So. Uh, All right. Arlo Black. How do you get stitched up, and how do you refresh yourself after this venture? Oh, gosh. Well, I go home. Mm-hmm. Um, I avoid my mother and father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I do find Mr. Telbrook and Miss Thomas. Uh, yes, of course, yeah. Um, Miss Thomas, would you mind drawing a bath? Of course, I'd be happy to. Thank you, uh, You look a bit worse for wear, Miss. Yeah, do either of you have any medical knowledge? I can stitch you up on my own life. Oh, thank I you. I was a, a field doctor in the war. Of course you were, Mr. Telbrook. Aged out, I thought, but they needed help, so. Sonny told me about that. Hmm. Would you Would you mind terribly? Of course, I'd be happy to. And I'll sit while he works on my head and I'll tell them all about everything that happened. Um, and don't, don't tell anyone. But, oh, I do think we should send something over to the Clara house. Now, I already told, I already told Candela to do that, but I think we should send more. And if anybody comes knocking from the steel, I may have damaged the foundry over there. Um, direct them my way before sending them to Father, please. They both look at each other. Of course, an eventful evening. It was quite an exciting adventure. They, they look like they are happy to dive into the frivolities you speak of, and it's wonderful you have an active imagination. It shouldn't <laughs> hurt yourself anymore. After I take a long bath where I'm completely shriveled like a raisin, I will crawl into bed and sleep for a, uh, the entire day and just lounge about the house doing nothing but staring at the ceilings. That is my favorite way to refresh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Haven't done that in eight years. 
Uh, all right, and so uh, after that we have uh, Augie, you got stitched up. How do you go about getting yourself stitched up here in New Fair? Boy, um, gosh, who would I go to? Yeah, um, okay, I think, I was thinking, I love this new place that I have. But I'm feeling like tonight, I want to feel a little bit of comfort of what feels like home for mm -hmm. me. And that's my, I caught at the sight unseen in Miss Charlie's office. So I'm gonna go back there, I'm gonna cuddle up, hold my pillow, and just try to get warm and sleep. Okay. Um, Knowing that he's come back, um, I'd like to speak to Stinson and have him bring over the doctor, the one who um, occasionally helps some of my co-workers stitch themselves up after Not fights. a worry, I'll go ahead and fetch him. Thank you, thank you. Just wanders off before the doctor returns. This kind of like, uh, you know, stone wall, you know, or, uh, Thick side beard, mustache, uh, the combination frizzled out hair on the sides, uh, kind of a hunched the center of his back. Uh, kind of looks like Brad Dourif from Deadwood, essentially. <laughs> yes. Um, kind of wanders and goes. All right. Um, <laughs> you you need to be stitching up anyone. Let's see what you got. Yes. Yes. Uh, discretion is always, but always is always. For this I'll time. Operate, yeah. For this time. Yeah. A bit of. Gentleness as well. Please. I'm gentle as the world is soft. Well, well he, he, he's okay. And I just open the door and he's asleep. Can you just take care of him as best you can and give him something to rest? Yeah, yeah. If you want, if you want me to get clean his wounds and stuff, yeah. he's gonna wake up. That's fine, but then if you could give him something to rest. Fair enough. Goes and opens up his doctor's bag as you kind of close the door. And, uh, hey, what you doing? I was, no, I was just trying to help whoa, you whoa, here, drink. Whoa, whoa, okay. Yeah, take, take a sip of this and then relax a bit. I'm going to get, make sure y'all take care of it. Oh, that's delicious. That's delicious. <laughs> hey, don't worry, I'm just going to stitch you. This isn't going to hurt you much. And, uh, <laughs> you wake up about 12 hours later, uh, sore, but uh, your scrapes, your. your Gashes have all been stitched up and cleaned. Um, the area in your kind of uh, <laughs> chest where there's almost like almost the beginning of frostbite had kicked in from where you were uh, clawed through by the entity has been uh, treated with salve and is recovering. It's like kind of red and raw. Um, you feel pretty well recovered from the endeavor. I'm going to get up right before the sun comes up, and go pick up my papes, and get back to work. Hell yeah. And you, Charlotte, how do you refresh yourself? Yes, um, I do go back to the sight unseen, but I tell Stinson, uh, I'm going to take a few days away, if you don't mind, if you can watch over the, watch over the, everything. Not a worm, ma'am, I got you covered. <laughs> we'll take care of it. Yeah, Just, uh, it. there's so oh, many things. <laughs> it's so difficult being a businesswoman, a, a proprietor in this day and age. So many companies, so many dealings, so much uh, to do. Can't even begin to try and understand it, but we got you covered. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. And uh, she makes her way up to a very nice home in the eaves. Uh, and she opens the door, doesn't knock. She opens the door and uh, there is a, an elderly gentleman there. Sherman. Yes, my dear. How, how is she today? Is she, is she clear? She's clear as usual. Mm. Seems to be in high spirits. If you'd like to um, give her a visit, I think she'd appreciate it. I would. Mm. I'm going to be staying for a little while. Not too long, perhaps. Uh, of course. Rooms are ever prepared just in case. Thank you. Uh, and I go up the very grand staircase um, to a bedroom where there is uh, an elderly woman um, sitting at her desk with 
a lot of papers and books, but kind of looking off into space and not at them. And I knock. Dead? Gertrude, I have a story for you. Tell me a story, that sounds nice. Hmm. And I pull up a chair, and I start to tell her all about everything that happened. Uh, I change the details just a little bit, so there's very much of a happy fairy tale ending. Uh, I'll be here for a few days with you, and perhaps I'll have some more stories for you, yeah? Okay. Please. Mm. I like your story. Just seeing her is such a... It transports me back to a very simpler time, a much simpler time when I didn't remember what I had seen. I had seen it, but I did not remember. And, uh, and it gives me some peace for a few days. Wonderful. I believe that's all the resources we've spent between sessions here. And with that, we close this first episode of Candela Obscura. Thank you so much, my wonderful players. <laughs> Robbie Damon, Laura Bailey, Hello. Anjali Bamani, <laughs> Ashley Johnson. I'm your game master, Matthew Mercer. Thank you so much. A lonely road lies ahead for those whose minds have been cracked asunder. Welcome to Candela Obscura. Here in the country of Hale, in the city of New Fair, the evening grows late here in the Red Lamp District. As the parties roll on, the music and revelry echoes throughout the city's streets. The occasional tinging of the cable car cruising through, grabbing those who are too drunk to stumble their way home safely, and hopefully not too drunk to hold themselves safely on the cable car. You see people stumbling through the streets, you hear the music blaring out of various open doors of briefly available clubs before they shut once more. The fog itself, thicker and thicker as the night goes on, giving this kind of orange-red ambiance to the entire district of the city. As we pull up to the bottom of the Getaway Grand Hotel, Drifting up floor after floor after floor, above the thick blanket, the thickest blanket of the fog, till just a bit of that mist still remains. We come to the sixth floor, and here, through a window, we push in to see a middle-aged woman, hair pulled up high and uh, tightly bound curls, uh, looking into a mirror as she begins to pull her hair back. You can see she uh, well made up uh, necklaces, the beautiful little uh, emerald uh, necklace that hangs around her clavicle and other chains uh, as she continues to undo her hair before saying out loud, oh, this entire day has been a strange problem. So many voices from so many distant individuals as she pulls a pin out and the hair begins to tumble past her shoulders. Oh, if another one of these labor unions would Stop crawling up my ass and I can get some actual work done for this town. Throws down the pin onto a dresser. Maybe I could unwind just a little bit. Behind her, you see, sitting on the edge of a bed, a uh, younger gentleman in probably his late 20s or so. Handsome square jaw, short brown hair, kind of just gently curled. Uh, lays back with uh, no shirt and just his pants. This long brown trousers, looks to her and says, my dear, but isn't that why you come and visit anyway? And she kind of smiles a bit and takes her blouse off before uh, setting her bracelets down on the side. Um, turns to him, her neck jewelry kind of glittering in the middle of the uh, bit of moonlight that's coming through the fog. Indeed it is, and it's been such a tough day. It looks like you'll have to help me relax. And he smiles and reaches up and grabs her hand and pulls her towards the bed as we pull the way from the window back into the red-lit fog of the night. Here amongst the revelry and music and shouts and laughter and coughing, the sounds of pleasure 
begin to take the night beyond this window. And then screams. Two voices screaming shatter the night. Come the morning. You, Augie, up early. <laughs> Having been here, spent a number of weeks here within the Gilded Rainbow, your new established homestead here, uh, you step out from your now private quarters, something you've not quite really had uh, officially for some time, to the smell of fresh coffee as Reggie uh, is sipping from his mug and currently going through the morning paper as you kind of step out of the room, kind of looks over her shoulder towards you and goes, Morning, Reggie. Good morning, Reggie. <laughs> what's uh, what's uh, what, what's what's going on? <laughs> I totally did. Sorry, that was the brain. That was, so I'd like to say good morning to myself as well. Sometimes. <laughs> Edge. Good morning. I was gonna say that you were correcting me or something. No. I'm gonna say hello. No, you're good. Wait, good morning what? to you as well, Augie. Uh, <laughs> glad we're both present. What's what's going on in the stories today? Anything good? Honestly, nothing quite so eye-catching. Currently, it seems that there's just a bit of discussion of, well, unrest down in the groundswell. Looks like there is uh, talk of uh, an incoming heavy shipment to the Hallow Harbor. Um, they're currently keeping some of the naval guardians near the vast chasm uh, to be doing inspections of uh, some sort of expected shipment from otherwhere. Beyond that, it looks like there are a number of performances to be happening from uh, local musicians, as well as one who's traveled quite a bit from the uh, Scarlet Wood above. Oh. Um, but uh, beyond that, nothing that catches the attention uh, that we normally look for, at least. Would you, would you like some coffee? Oh, yeah. Sets his cup down and goes over. Oh, I will go get it. I, did, I thought you were going <laughs> to. No, no, uh, I'm already up. It's let fine. me go get it, let me go I, get I, it. I, uh, I'll go get it, I'll go get it. I know the drill, I know the drill. I've been here for a few weeks now. Fair enough. <clears throat> Ooh. You go over and... Yum! <laughs> Just how you like it. Just how I like it. Just a little bit too sweet. <laughs> um, Six lumps. <laughs> <laughs> right as you take in that first morning sip, feeling kind of like, you know, the warmth wash through you, uh, you hear the familiar sound of the bell in the front door jingle. Ting, ting, ding, 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 ding. Coming through in the morning, you see, uh, pulling the hood of their jacket back, uh, the familiar sight of Lightkeeper Alexandra walks in. Hi. Good morning, Augie. Reggie. Not talking to yourself again, are you? It's like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's a long night. <laughs> Looks back to you. <sighs> How are we getting on here in your new quarters? I, I, I love it. It's really cool, and at night, you know, I, I go out and I grab a book and just immerse myself in stories. I like it. Thank you again, truly. I'm happy to hear that. Reggie, you, you don't mind, do you? And she kind of like pulls a cigar out of her jacket. It's like, no, I mean, <laughs> you're the light keeper. She goes ahead and lights it up a little bit. You can see as the flame, as it sparks up the edge, uh, her Did you one. Have those. <laughs> it's a bad habit. I'm not about to spread it to you. I've been smoking since I was eight. Then you can find your own smokes. Yeah, I agree. The flame of her lighter kind of lights up, and you can see that golden gleam of her one altered pupil uh, as she takes a bit of a puff, and as the smoke kind of drifts around her face, turns back. I assume you understand my presence here means it's business. There's been um. It's been an event, and uh, I think we're gonna have to call your circle together to take a look into it. So uh, enjoy what bits of the morning you have left. The others will be up soon enough. We're gonna have a talk. And she goes and yeah, walks out the front of the library. Reggie's currently grabbing his coffee again and looks back towards you. She's a piece of work, I'll tell you that. Indeed she is, she's, um, She's seen some things. I can tell. Well, I guess I'll go ahead, and he goes and turns the sign in the front of the 
shop over to closed out front. The rest of you, throughout your morning experiences, receive familiar missives with the symbol of Candela Obscura sealed atop it, calling you back to the Gilded Rainbow bookstore. In the short order, in the next hour or so, the three of you begin to shuffle in one after the next until you have all arrived. As you all kind of gather within the center, Augie, you greet them as you do. Hello, hello, ma'am, <laughs> sir, <laughs> Charlie. Doctor. Come, uh, doctor, excuse me, we're not there yet, I understand. Please come to my beautiful, humble abode. <laughs> what a beautiful I, home you have, Augie. Thank I, you. I take it you're getting on rather well. I do, it's pretty great. Mm. It's pretty great. Yeah. Ding, ding, the bell rings once more, and you watch as Lightkeeper Alexandra steps back in, closing the door and latching it behind her. Um, so she unwraps a small taffy, pops in her mouth a bit. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on such short notice. It's going to be likely a busy day. Nods over to Reggie, who goes and closes the curtains, kind of giving the darker, ominous interior of this bookstore even further shape. Um, one of the lanterns is given a bit more oil and then placed on the center cabinet as you all kind of circle around it. Word has gotten around here that a primacy chamberwoman's hotel room was attacked last night. The chamber was apparently left in absolute disarray. She is nowhere to be found. The handful of folks who were wandering the streets at that hour recall seeing something massive rushing to or from the scene in shadow some beast. Whatever took her is likely not natural and has definitely garnered Candela's attention. We would like you to investigate this, discover where this thing came from, where this chamberwoman is, and if she can be returned safely may not necessarily agree with the politics, but whatever this is, you can only assume she is not the only one in danger the longer it's out there. Do we know anything more about this chamberwoman? About uh, if she may be particularly controversial, if she may be uh, someone who has lots of enemies? Yes and yes. Uh, her name is Onette Ferris, and while not a upper-level chamberwoman herself, she is deeply involved in the political circle that approves guild and import tariffs, both local and abroad. She is uh, Deeply steeped in many unhappy business ventures within the city, and is responsible for putting a bit of a, a bit of a bottleneck on opening wider trade with otherware. Hmm. So, this may be politically motivated, and if it is, then what are they using to give their vengeance? These are important questions to answer. Do you need anything for your journey? Do you have anything that will defeat Shadow Beasts on you? Good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she leans back in her pocket, thinks for a second, pulls out a small, it looks like a like a corked vial glass. The interior of it just kind of shakes a little bit, and it looks almost like it has a, like a thick, syrupy, like molasses-like, dark liquid on the inside that kind of coats the, the interior of the glass. Tosses it to you. <laughs> it didn't break. Uh, won't last long, but you put that on the edge of any sort of blade or weapon, it will leave an impact on something uh, between worlds. Thank you. 
Welcome. Anything else? Do you know the name of the, um, the institution where she was attacked? It was referred to as the Getaway Grand Hotel in Redland. I believe a few of you may be familiar with it. Maybe you've passed by. Maybe you've used its services. Yeah, of course. Um, but... It's not used. I'd recommend checking soon. For the longer we wait, the more interests will be garnered from other such factions in the city. Was there anyone known to be with her there? I do not know. We've not quite investigated ourselves. You're the first line of learning right. this info. Uh, I do believe the uh, periphery has already begun to scope out the location as it is a crime scene of a very high profile individual. So prepare yourselves to um, rub shoulders with the local police. Mm. Have but they closed <coughs> the establishment or merely cordoned off the room? As far as I can only imagine, just the room, it's still a place of business. Mm. And uh, it wasn't a murder scene that we know of. I think that would have changed circumstances. Yeah. But uh, who knows, if they find something more dangerous, they might just do that, so time is of the essence. We should go. Oh, we should. <laughs> Can't help it. The getaway ground is known for charging by the hour. I don't mean to assume anything about the uh, chamber woman's predilections, but if that is the case, then there's a witness somewhere. Mm. Yes. Oh. Like pra pra a prostitute. Yes. He, he means a prostitute. Of course. Yeah. I think my brother does all this. Of course. <laughs> well, right. okay. I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Good luck. And once again, stay safe. Thank you. Exit. Ding, 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 ding. You know, in all it's my years. Varnish, right? Okay. Do you know, in all my years here at Glendella, I have never seen someone ask that question. Do you have something to defeat shadow demons? Oh, I didn't think she really would. Speaking of which, uh, oh. I, I'll certainly be back, but I'd love to do it. Of course. I don't carry blades, so You're I know you do, though. <laughs> Your directness is absolutely a Like as you hold up the light, now that you can put it there, uh, it it definitely has that like dark, semi-translucent, almost molasses texture to it when you hold it like between uh, the light and you. But there's almost like slivers of metal, in there, like a liquid metal, almost like there's a mercury mixed in with it somewhere. Do you still have your uh, your bleed detector? Always. I'd be interested to see if, uh, what's in that vial. Mm. As you detect the exterior of it, it does not have any bleed signature on it, which is welcoming. Mm. Could be any number of things. A chemical mixture, there appear to be elements of metal inside. The world has a rich history of uh, like Hanthropy and Therianthropes, uh, half-human monsters, and the legend says usually uh, some sort of metal uh, works against them. It's just an idea, but um, why don't That's know. not fucking real. Is that real? That's real. That's Shadow real? beasts are real. Why couldn't werewolves be? I've never seen one, but uh, history is history. <laughs> And there's always a little bit of truth to it. Quite interesting. Oh, keep it. Oh, all right. Well, put it in my pocket. The shell. Critical engine damaged. Uh, all stations. Uh, how far is the from site and sea? Um, maybe about a five-minute walk down the road. It's a little more central. Um, there's, you know, when you go through the uh, uh, the red lamp. There are a number of kind of streets that divide from where the office goes. Uh, right towards the center, there's a massive uh, 
segment where like four main streets kind of converge into one large marketplace. It's mm -hmm. not quite on the corner there, but it's just off the side, one of the main streets there. And it kind of faces outward, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a prominent establishment, mm -hmm. though it is a little sunken back from the main street. There's a little bit of like a tiny courtyard that's built there. It's not really well kept. <laughs> it is the Red Lamp District. Uh, not every proprietor is as um, exacting. You mean the Fawn District? <laughs> Yes, the Fern District. Why do you think I have my place there? I am interested in finding out... Well, so many things. I'm interested in finding out exactly why she chose to be there. I mean, the Chamberwoman obviously has her own home. Well, mm. true, but most likely she has a family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, she does. I'd like to... Yeah, uh, or I, maybe she's... She has a hard time finding anyone to be intimate with. Maybe she's very shy in, in her everyday life, and she looks forward to finding someone who will let her be herself for a moment. I like you more and more the more you talk, you know that? <laughs> uh, who, who, who's typically in charge of establishments such as this? Uh, a, a, a madam or a... Well, uh, the, uh, would I know the owner of the getaway van? Uh, yes, you, you would actually know the owner. Uh, the owner, his name is uh, Simon Terrafon. So the same Simon that we spoke about last That's time. That's a different police Simon. officer. Okay. Different Simon. Simon Terrafon? Simon Terrafon. And, uh, and this, this is, it does operate primarily as a hotel, publicly. Publicly. <laughs> oh. Right. Uh, uh, do I know him personally? Uh, you know of him. You may have had a passing conversation with him, but he kind of stays to his establishment, mm -hmm. occasionally wandering around. So you haven't had many, many crossing of paths in the past. But like anybody who does a lot of business in this town, and you make it your business to know who does mm -hmm. business in that part of town, you know of him. We're, we're walking there right now. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So gather your things. Uh, traverse back, back down into Red Lamp, which at this time of day, this early morning, which now it's kind of late morning, 10, 11 or so, you know, pushing noon in the next hour or so. Um, the majority of the street does not carry the same liveliness it does in the evening. Um, there are people sobering up. There are individuals who are just kind of traveling through, some that are emerging from some of the various places of business and hoping to not be noticed as they skitter off like insects when you turn the lights on, um, trying to find their business around, pardon me, pardon the scooping of these. Right <laughs> um, but eventually, following your trail, you head to the exterior of the getaway grid, the eight-story complex a little bit recessed from the main street, where you can see the, the red brick and the, the fine stone work that's kind of, it's built to look like it once held some esteem, uh, but it has definitely fallen to a bit of disrepair. There are uh, pockets of, of dirt and grime that have kind of built up through the rains that nobody's really had the time or funds to, to tend to but nobody necessarily comes here for the grandiose presentation of the establishment. It's definitely not terrible, but it it's not it's no varnish type establishment. Mm. Um, the little courtyard here has some bushes, some that are, you know, uh, well kept. The grass here is mostly mud these days due to the weather. Um, and uh, the little gate that kind of closes off the interior is open. Uh, the front double doors you see with fine brass pullers to open it up are there, but there is a peri uh, periphery officer kind of just standing at the door, just kind of looking around with a familiar uh, dark hat with the two points, almost the horseshoe shape at the front, mm. kind of stands there, arm in arm, glancing out. Do you think he'll let us in? Let's find out. Good day, officer. All right, good day. Huh? Yes, uh, uh, don't know if you know me, I'm a proprietor nearby, of the sight unseen. I'm here to take a meeting with my colleagues and a, a new potential business partner. Uh, may we pass? Uh, make a sway roll, this is low stakes. This is more just kind of 
gleaning your business. Yep. What'd you roll? Double ones. Ooh. Double ones. Whoa, oh, no. rough. Listen. All uh, right. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a bit of a, an event the night before. Uh, if you come back in about an hour or two, we'll be done with our business, and you can tend to it or find another uh, other venue out and about. But uh, I, oh, uh, it's periphery business. Uh, as our partner is probably already here, they've come in from out of town. Uh, we'll return in an hour. May we? Uh, may we send a missive? Uh, uh, reaches into his jacket and pulls out a small pad of paper and a little pencil. I can see what I can do. Uh, would you... Gee, I'm not right. uh, Would you write a letter to the front desk for me and let uh, Matthew know that... <laughs> yeah, just, um, let Matthew know that uh, <laughs> Miss... <laughs> it's my name. <laughs> Uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. I just. <laughs> 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 it's happens to me every day. <laughs> as soon as I realized, Matthew! Ah! Great! I need Everything more else caffeine. Shot out of the head. <laughs> yep. <laughs> as soon as I realized that. <laughs> um, right. It's very serious business. Uh, would you please uh, let Matthew know that uh, Ms. Eves came by uh, and had been uh, looking to uh, meet in uh, the regular room? with their colleague, and if he would uh, possibly stay put and keep ready, that we would be by in approximately one hour and 15 minutes. Okay, I'll do what I can. Mm. Mm, thank you. Now, go on your way. Uh, during this time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will try to see, because to sneak. Yeah. I want to try to just sneak on past. To starboard. Yeah. Okay, okay. Go ahead and make a, uh, make a hide. And because I have born in the shadows and attempting to avoid security or detection, you gild an extra die. You gild, you gild an extra hide die. So my boy. So we got this one? Yeah, this one. So how many? How many so for high, so it's two dice, but they're both gilded for you. Unless you want to spend a drive. Oh, they're both gilded. Okay. So uh, I'm, oh. I'm also a sneaky beeper, so I'm going to give you some help. Because I'm gonna immediately, I'm gonna figure, I'm gonna clock that mm -hmm. you're about to make a sneak. Okay. So I'd like to just uh, help by doing a little distraction. So I'll go. spend a drive okay. to give you an extra die. You got it. Y'all. Right. Okay. Okay. We were Yo, rolling. Okay. You guys are rolling. Dude. On the guild that I rolled a one and a two, and then on the other one I rolled a two. Well, you get your drive oh, back, no. right? Yep. Yeah, well, that's you get good. Your drive back. That's yeah. our that's our circle ab so, that, that's our fuck. circle ability. Yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, you go you trauma. go ahead and, and, and kind of trauma intervene body. behind her to go ahead and get the attention. Um, as you're doing so, <laughs> you fucking trip on my shoelace. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of stumble for a bit and hit her back in the shoulder, who knocks into him slightly, who pushes him back, and his arm goes out to catch himself, which also blocks your entry just as you're passing by, and as you bump into his arm, he goes, hey, 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 hey. Sorry, it's, 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 it's a tussle. I don't know what I That's why I come back in an hour. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Are you all right? I'm fine. Um, I'm, I'm walking away fast and shaking my head. I don't know what's... Charlie's entrance. Uh, There's gotta be a service entrance or something. I'm, I'm, I'm more frustrated about losing my... Losing my food there. Did you forget your name for a moment? Yeah, I... I Blood on my mind. Uh, there should be another entrance, uh, the service entrance, of course, and uh, well, there would be a fire escape. There are, you do know, and you can see from the back away from the entryway, there are two alleys that run to the right and left of it, so it's buttressed against two other larger buildings. Not quite as tall as the getaway, but definitely on each side, about three stories on one and five on the other. Um, and there are buildings behind as well. So you would assume, and you know this area pretty well just from darting through the alleys here, there are alleys that wind in the back of a lot of these mm. businesses as well. Okay. So. I kind of know this area. Oh. Gotta take us to the back and see if there's another entrance. Like a basement into entrance. The anyway, so I don't see why sneaking into the premises would be any different. I agree. So, following your lead, you can head around, turning left from exiting the front of the getaway, darting into another adjacent alley about two buildings down to make sure that you're both out of sight and also just finding a nice spot where you're not being 
noticed uh, as you kind of dart into one of the dark shaded gaps between this presentational street. Uh, you go ahead and head backwards to the back alley. There's a bunch of garbage and refuse and empty boxes, and it definitely has a, a musty hard water meets old trash smell that just permeates the back of this uh, this region. But as you curve to the left and begin to head further down, you see eventually the back of the door. Um Indeed, there is a fire escape that runs towards the back. Um, there are some piles of, of trash. And as before you approach, you see uh, one of the numerous vagrants that wander back here is kind of like balled up near one of the trash bags. As soon as you approach, he gets up and grabs his stuff and starts walking away. But you are. Get out of here. What was? On the sixth floor. Sixth floor. Sixth floor. That's all we know. That's all you know. The sixth floor. Okay. You look up the fire escape towards the sixth floor when you're making this notion, and you do see a window that is blown out. Like there is a hole. Like there, it is broken and shattered. And you can see now to the ground where you're standing, right beneath it, there are glass shards like all over the alleyway right here. There, uh, looking back up at it, you can see the actual brick is damaged. There are chunks of brick on the floor. It looks like looks like something just bashed its way out of this. The guy that just ran off. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, were you were you here last night? Beginning of the morning? Were you here all night? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you didn't see nothing. You didn't no, see. No, no, no. Saw nothing. Saw what? Old dudes, you know, missing a few teeth, uh, kind eyes. The gentleman looks like in his 60s or so with kind of these uh, tufts of hair on the side of his head that kind of come into these like, greasy points at the end. He's just wearing kind of uh, a couple layers of gathered clothing and he grabbed a large uh, sack of something and he's kind of under his arm. Yeah, I, I, what, why? Did you hear anything? Did you see anything? Were you. Does yeah, he have any glass on him? <laughs> he, <did. laughs> he does not have any glass on him. Um, but you see him kind of like holding something tightly under his arm. He's like, well, I mean, yeah, you see weird stuff around here all the time. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know we see weird shit, but like, I'm talking weird fucking shit. Kind of shifts from foot to foot for a second, thinking. Can I roll a read on him to see yes, like, you what may. he's trying to hide? Go ahead and make a lead test for me. Oh, wait. Has to self-actualize here. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I can't remember my name, so don't look to me. I'm gonna. Okay, okay. that's fine. But I, I rolled a four, a mixed success yes. on a gilded. Yes. Okay. So. On the gilded. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs>